I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. Uh, Steve uh, Gutman joins me today, and I'm going to review the Americans. So, uh, Steve, in terms of you know your walkaway feeling from this movie, um, you know what 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 where did the plot start? And where did it end? And how did you feel you learned something? Well, it's actually a TV series that goes for like 13 episodes that they ran for like five years of, of, of a series of incidents. And it really starts with in, in Russia, where there's two individuals who are signing up for the secret brother K KGB. Uh, and they're, they're told they're going to be acting as a married couple and going to America. Hence the, the name of the, of the, of the series. It, it seems to be based upon a an actual uh, Russian adventure that they, they had tried. They actually did have some people in the United States uh, for an extended period living as a married couple. But of course, they never got into the, the, the various events that occurred during this, this series. Yeah. Um, okay. How did how did you feel about it in terms of uh, a new experience, uh, uh, learning from this movie, things that maybe you didn't recognize before, uh, things that changed your view of mm, Russia, of the U.S., of um, life, you know, life beyond the Beltway, so to speak. Well, the the actual. Events between the couple are are a large, large part of what, what's really happening, where the, the husband is is really seems to be adapting to the experience of, of being in, in America. Um, she is is much more of a, of a nationalist and much more willing to 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 simply follow whatever the orders are, no matter you know, how extreme or how how how, how violent they they get. Um, in terms of the stereotype of Russia, um, it, it, it really kind of reinforces a lot of what's even happening today with, with the, U Ukraine, where, where people get into certain missions and they just keep, keep going regardless of the consequences and regardless of the fact that they're putting themselves in extreme danger in the, in the course of doing it. Hmm. Did you know this before, or is this something that was um, a kind of educational in in the series? Well, it's 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 educational, um, but it, it 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 to some degree, I think it fit what was the stereotype of of, of what, what was the Russian society. What was what's actually kind of interesting is they is the interplay between actual events. Like one of the episodes takes place. Um, when Reagan was, 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 was shot and I'm trying to figure out, um, who actually was, was the shooter was, was it even one of their own people that did it? Um, who, who was taking control, the, the perspective on what was going on with Al Haig, um, who put himself in, in, a, in authority to confuse the Russians as, as well as confusing, uh, in America and actually brought back some memories um, in terms of when these events were really occurring. But a number of these episodes really have an actual factual event that occurred during the 1980s and them putting a, a different spin on it by, by interplaying the, the experience of, the, of this couple trying to advance the, the, whatever is the Russian cause and it, it ends up for, for really being very engrossing. You, you really do get involved with it. Uh, when, when I first started watching it, uh, I just sat down and next, next at around four o'clock in the afternoon, it was close to 10, 10 p.m. When, when I turned it off because each episode just got me more and more involved with, uh, with the characters. Now, there are lots of episodes. Gee whiz, it goes on and on, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. And yet, and yet, um, they they draw you in. You know, I I I looked at a um, 
uh, a retrospective uh, analysis of the series. And uh, they went through each season and told you the high points of the season. It's on YouTube. It's very interesting. And and I, I tell you the truth, I, I couldn't remember all the things that they were demonstrating in this retrospective. I must have missed some of it. Um, because it moves very fast. It's a, it's a kind of movie, kind of series, where you have to catch everything. Um, you have to stop it and go back uh, with your remote and look at the last few minutes to see what, what happened and what was said. Because, the, you know, the plot was pretty intricate. And, um, and you, you needed to follow it all the time. Uh, and it changed. So, and, and I think that's, you know, I had the same experience. I couldn't put it down. Um, and even then, I missed uh, certain parts of it. But there were, there were moments uh, of um, violence and assassination, lethal um, you know, scenes that really were unforgettable. There were also family, family scenes that were unforgettable. Did you? Did you? Yeah, that was kind of it? interesting. Of the fact that they 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 ended up having two two kids, and the kids were born in America, so they were actually American citizens, and they had no concept at all in terms of what their their parents were were doing, and it it, it, it to have that that kind of interplay. Of, of the school and, and, and them having just normal teenage experiences um, while the parents are out there creating mayhem at various points. Um, it, 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 I think that was part of the reason why it, it does kind of suck you in. Um, my wife, no, normally anything that's got some violence to it won't watch it, but she happened to sit down and, and she ended up sitting there for about three hours there with, with me beginning just totally engrossed, but not having seen the very first couple of episodes, um, she did have a little bit of a problem keeping track of, of the characters. And I think that's probably one of the minus of, 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 of the show is it's, it does, it does become a little complicated in terms of who's on first, so to speak. Yeah. The viewer in that retrospective made a comment along those lines, said you had to take notes. You had to make a chart of schematic on the wall, like a Dostoevsky novel, uh, <laughs> Russian fellow, as I recall. Uh, yeah. You know, it's a track on who's doing what to whom. But, but did, were you sympathetic? Did you like this family who were, you know, planted KGB agents, busy, like virtually every day in executing the orders of the, what do they call it, the control? <clears throat> um, did you like them? Were they a, a family that you could relate to? I I think they are. I think they they, they came across as, as very as very normal. I mean, one of the interesting parts of this was that after they moved into this particular neighborhood, they ended up having a, a neighbor move in who turns out to be an FBI agent, um, who at a couple points gets added some success. Was 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 wondering a little bit about them, but then never you know, was at least in the first few episodes um, didn't have a clue in terms of them being spies. Yeah. Oh, um, what did you think of the controller? There was the center that was in Moscow, and then there was this woman who looked like a, a you know a dowdy grandmother type, who in fact was capable of murder, like all of them. Um, what do you think of her? She was, on the one hand, lovable. Um, on the other hand, um, you know, she was complete fake. And as I said, capable of murder. Um, what, kind of, what kind of reaction did you have to her? Well, it was actually it was a similar reaction as I, as I had to, to, to the wife. The, the females, in, in a lot of ways, were, were much more vicious than, than the males um they 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 they, they basically uh were were much more if, if if the order is is out there it's got to be done and if it concludes a murder it will so be it um the the husband at least at various points seemed to have questions doubts and um 
and and wondering what 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 really was the appropriate action. Um, so they, that particular interplay. Um, it was also very interesting how much, in terms of of sex, they, they use that as a way to 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 become second, you know, agents for, for you know once both sides using the the the, the using the sex angle. Um, they, uh, there's, there's some pretty sexy scenes in, in, in this, in this series. Yeah. I mean, I, I suppose it's true. I mean, we learned about, um, spycraft. We learned how sex works and when violence is, uh, appropriate and how violence is done so that nobody can tell, um, you know, who did it or how it was done. Uh, we learned about the technology of the 80s, you know, the uh, and how faithful. This is like the Fableman's movie that we reviewed last time, how, how faithful the movie is to the detail of the time. Um, and Absolutely. for that matter, the technology of the time. It was extraordinary how um, the, 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 the technological devices, the listening devices they used, um, and, the, and the murder weapons, if you will, um, we're, we're, we're set in that period. Um, and um, they're so different than they are today. And as you said, you know, there were so many interweavings of actual events that after a while it had a, it had a credibility. Um, it's almost like, as you said, this, this would be a family that actually lived in those times um, that followed what Ronald Reagan was doing and followed what the American government was doing in the Cold War with Russia. It was all set in the Cold War. And you were reminded of that with these TV shots, uh, news news uh, commentators right. and the like. Um, hmm. what, I, what I found interesting was um, I, didn't, I didn't know that spies were operating like this in the country. Um, that I, you know, talked, I, I asked around, I saw some articles after, and I realized that there were spies like this. And it wasn't just, you know, one or two, it was many. Uh, yeah, the they, basic they were, concept, yeah, was, was, was really drawn from, from reality. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't think we ever, I don't think, I don't know if America ever really knew for sure how many uh, artificial families that the Russians had planted. Um, but, uh, I mean, it, it, they broke it open in the early 1980s is, is, is was when the individuals that they, they did capture, uh, were, were arrested. But yeah, I mean, you're, you're watching and all of a sudden they're talking about Casper Weinberg and, and they're in his, 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 his library room and they're, they're setting up a microphone to, to, to hear. And then they, they're starting to talk about actual events that, that actually took place. Um. And, and so to to in, intertwine that with with the with the fictionalized uh, events was uh, re, was re, really re, remarkable. The uh, but but the coldness of 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 the Russians. I mean, the like in the, the one place where in order to get the the, the mic set up in the Weinberg room, um, they actually uh, poisoned uh, the the maid's son. And and they they basically uh, were were prepared to let him die if, if she wasn't willing to to put the mic in. Um, that 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 kind of ruthlessness is 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 not something that that you normally see. No, and that was not a bluff. Not no, even in the context of the of the series, uh, they really meant it, and um, and you know the, the characters were serious assassins. And uh, you found yourself waiting for the next ex assassination because you knew it was coming and waiting for the next, um, you know, compromise using compromat information or using sex or developing phony relations. Um, there, was, there was this woman, Martha, who was the secretary to the, uh, the I guess, the, uh, the special agent in charge of, of this FBI office. This plays a big role uh, in the um, in in the series, and uh, um, our our friend, the husband. And by the way, they were not married at the inception. 
They were not married at the inception of the series. They got married during the series. They had a moment of romance, and they got married later on. But um, he actually married her in the series. He married right. the, the secretary to to the special agent in charge, uh, although he didn't live with her. And she was kind of a, an old maid kind of woman, and, and he had her in the palm of his hand, and he was, um, you know, uh, surveilling the special agent in charge. So he knew everything that the FBI was doing. Uh, it, was, it was extraordinary. By the way, um, if you didn't know, um, the, the two actors who played the husband and a wife, um, the woman is uh, Kerry Russell, um, and the, the husband, his name in the, in the program was um, Philip Jennings. Uh, the actor's name is Matthew Reese, R-H-Y-S. Um, they got married. At, at the actors got married. Oh. Uh, <laughs> in the middle of okay. the series. They, 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 so the, the actors in, in the series were married because they hadn't been married when they came to the United States. But then the actors themselves got married, and they are a couple now with a couple of small children right now today. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. So, you know, it was interesting to look at the, and see the way the Russians are operating and how they had brainwashed the husband and wife. And I think it's worth uh, spending a moment on the dynamic. You know, you always look for the, the port parole. That is, um, you know, the actor that carries the message. And in this case, it's quite a heavy message because it's it's uh, six uh, six uh, seasons. Um, while she, uh, what was the name, Elizabeth Jennings, um, you know, it was pretty brutal. She was involved in many brutal murders and sexual exploits. Um, he, yeah, I mean, she, she got, actually she got worse. She got she got more dedicated to the Russian cause. And she became the one who recruited their teenage daughter, which took um, a, a pretty hard view of things. Um, but he, Philip Jennings, um, he he changed. Over yeah, he was enjoying America. Yeah, yeah, you really got a sense of it. I mean, um, she she definitely uh, that's one of the oddities of this particular series. I mean. She had much more random sex sexual encounters than, than he did. Um, the ones that he had were were very visual, but but they they were with with a relatively small number of individuals. Um, hers were um, had to have sex so I can um, ca capture you maybe while you're weak and and then beat you up to to get some information. <laughs> you know it's. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little different twist. He got tired of it. He, he began to, he, he awoke, you know, somewhere in the middle of this series. And he decided that what the Russians were telling them, instructing them to do, making them tell their kids, you know, their, the MO of their lives wasn't really true. Um, the, the Russians were telling them, you're doing this for the motherland, for peace and and um, you know, world world order and all all the right things for the um, for for the people in Russia. And if you have any patriotism to Russia, you will you know see yourself as a a soldier, you know, as somebody who advances the interests of the motherland. But he began to question that because he was watching the news and he was comparing the news against the missions they were giving him. And he's somewhere in the middle, he decided he can't do this anymore. He can't do the sexual exploits and he can't do the assassinations. And the whole thing was becoming uncomfortable for him. Um, but, it, you know, this is very interesting. And I'd like to know your thought about it, that he overrode that ultimately because he did, he did establish a romantic connection with his wife, who is much tougher than he was and who actually I... got, got more patriotic to Russia as he got less patriotic, but they had become a real couple, a, a really romantic kind of image. You know, romance in in the in in the, the context of assassins. <laughs> yeah, really odd. Of course, this is also a time though 
when Russia itself is as a communist state is starting to deteriorate. Um, Gorbachev is 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 doing the reforms, and though, though those reforms really doomed the whole concept that that Russia was operating under. Um, you can see it with hindsight. I mean, not, at the time, um, you know, it, it looked like it, it was it was an inter it was it was going to make for an interesting country, um, but it it certainly backfired, and and now you've you've got a very different. You still have a very different society, and some of the in, same tendencies still seem to 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 be there, and there's still the assassinations going on. Um, with you know some of the, the the incidents with the oligarchs um, today, um, you could incorporate some of those storylines directly into the the, the storyline of, of of the Americans. Yeah. So um, I, I I felt that um, I had never heard of this before. I had never imagined it. I had trouble. Wrapping my my you know my appreciation of the fiction around it, uh, and it was much more complicated because of the FBI agent who was um, you know a a uh, it was a triumvirate here. We had the husband um, Elizabeth um, Jennings. We had the um, I'm sorry um, Philip Jennings and the wife Elizabeth Jennings, and then we had the fellow across the street Stan. Uh, uh, Beeman, and by the way, the uh, let me look at the uh, the name of the actor is Noah Emmerich, Emmerich, and uh, he was terrific. Uh, yeah, he really changed, you know, uh, um, during the, the the course of the of, of the of the series. Uh, you know, he, he he initially came across as a very much a goody a goody goody guy guy, and and then he turned into somebody that could get very violent very quickly. Um, and it was, it was really surprising um, when, when, when he suddenly assassinated the Russian, one, one particular Russian operator. Yeah, likewise, it was very surprising that he uh, was compromised um, by uh, a character called Nina. Maria. S- S- Nina Sergeyevna, yeah. uh, who was played by Annette. Mahandru, I, I think that's an Indian name. I'm not sure. She was really beautiful. I mean, as a person, oh, she is. She was a knockout the whole time, and and it was sad to see how um, she was uh, because she was playing both ends. She was a double agent, compromised, and they they um, they ultimately the Russians assassinated her in cold blood in some some prison in the Gulag. Uh, which was too bad because it was the end of her role. Lots of characters in this in this series disappeared. Oh and yeah, some some of them disappeared and then came back again. The majority, the majority of the time when the flashback occurred, they they did put a little label so you kind of knew that it it wasn't right in, in in the same time sequence. But they didn't always do that, and uh, you know it it. It really made you concentrate when you when you're watching this, but that's partly why you you kind of get get hooked. And um, as happened to me, you know, I'm, I ended up you know, sitting there for for a good five hours while watching the the various episodes, um, and not uh, and not getting bored at all. No, I never got bored. I had to watch the next one, and I would go later than you. I'd be after midnight watching it. So let, let's talk about some of the scenes that you remember from it. Uh, there are, you know, at least half a dozen scenes that were absolutely mind blowing. Um, can you think of any that that uh, that you carry around with you? Themes from from the, the, the some of the scenes that were remarkable. Well, they good part because it caught me both so much by surprise was the FBI agent, where suddenly you know he's 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 interrogating the guy. He gives him a hamburger to eat. Or I don't know if it was a hamburger, but it, it was something neat. And then he ends up walking behind him and suddenly assassinating him. Um, I mean that that just was was not was was not not expected at all. There was a connection because the young man that he assassinated was actually um, in some kind of relationship with Nina, and he 
uh, what was his name, uh, S- Stan Beeman, was in a relationship with Nina. And um, this very interesting um, character, I don't have it on my screen, but Oleg, who was a Russian diplomat hyphen KGB agent, he had a relationship with Nina. They, they were all competing for the Nina woman. <laughs> and that, that has to enter into his decision to assassinate the young man. Right, right. No, no, she she was uh, a really a strong, a strong character, um, and uh, it 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 was part. Well, but I was going to say in terms of 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 of, 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 of Philip, there, I got a small thing that kind of bothered me. You know, he when he, when he had the the, the the other relationship with with the the lady who was the secretary to the FBI chief. You know, he had on a hairpiece. How he managed to have the hairpiece on and end up spending the night sleeping over there, and the hairpiece always stays there. You know, I wonder. You know, about sometimes the same you get focused on, on on weird weird little things. That one just just kind of went. I mean, how 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 real is, is that? How how good can a hairpiece be? Then <laughs> I had the same reaction. The two of them, the husband and the wife, they were always in disguise. Then the disguises were very persuasive. It was usually a wig of some kind or a different pair of glasses or different jewelry. And, and you could only recognize them until you realized, hmm, this is in disguise. And then they got into bed with somebody, and I had the same reaction. How could they spend the night together in delecto, delecti flagranti and not realize that the person just a few inches away from them was wearing this big wig? How is that possible? Yeah, yeah. Um, that that I guess I said it, it just uh, the more I watched it, that that particular idea just just kept kept re- 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 reappearing, reappearing. Yeah. yeah. But uh, uh, well, I'm remembering this. Um, they were sent on a mission. I think it was. Um, yeah, she she was sent on a mission to investigate a Russian woman who had murdered a lot of Russian soldiers, Russian soldiers who were held prisoner by the Nazis at the end of World War um, II. And uh, she she participated in a mass murder of Russian soldiers. She herself was Russian. And they had information about her, the KGB, and they wanted to assassinate her. So remember the scene in their home? So she so it's first it's the the it's um Elizabeth Jennings has found her, has identified her as the woman. Um and then Philip Jennings shows up to sort of back up Elizabeth Jennings, and they both have guns and uh, with silences, of course. And then the husband of this Russian woman, who's playing an American, you know, she had she had become an American, um, comes and and they they beg for their lives because they know that, you know, this is going to have a bad ending. And um, the two Jennings, a husband and wife, are listening to this, um, but they are hard like nails. They have their orders and they wind up killing both of them simultaneously. Um, that was a very hard scene. That was like the assassination of the uh, the young uh, Russian uh, em- embassy yeah. worker. Um, I, I was shocked by that. I thought they would, I thought they would find some sympathy for these two people, but they didn't. You know, of course, it, it, there was a whole lot of Russians that were not wanting to go back to Russia because, in, for World War Two, who were who were. Um, being held by the Nazis because they were very concerned that they would automatically go be sent to Siberia if they were lucky, if they weren't just out and out killed when when they when they came home. So I mean, it, it took some real life incidents that really were occurring in in Russia and and converted it into the storyline. Um, yeah, one of the fundamental points um, in the storyline was uh, you know if you fail. Um, if you fail to, uh, you know, execute the missions uh, that we 
uh, the controller, or the, cent the center, quote, the center is Moscow, uh, give you to do, um, you, you know, you can't be KGB anymore. You have to go back uh, to Russia. Uh, or if the FBI gets too close to you and you are revealed and, um, you know, under, under threat of being arrested and prosecuted as spies, uh, we will extricate you um, and, and send you back to Russia. And that was, you know, that was the bottom line. That was the end game um, that, that both the husband and wife always carried around with them. And when they made the young daughter, the, uh, let's see, her age was a name, Paige Jennings, played by Holly Hunter. When they, when they turned her into a Russian agent also as a teenager, that was, uh, you know, the plan. The, the young son never, that was right. uh, Henry, uh, played by Kedrick Salati. Um, he, he never knew about any of this. He, he was too young. So uh, my, my point, though, is that that was, that was the solution, the ultimate solution, that they would find a way back to Russia and, and they would be either welcomed or, <laughs> or possibly sent to the gulag for their efforts as KGB. And at the end of the movie, there's this, this extraordinary combination of, of scenes. One is where the FBI guy realizes what's going on. Uh, he realizes his neighbors are KGB, and he catches them, the three of them, that is husband, wife, and daughter, in a garage. That was really incredible as a scene, because he, he now, uh, as an FBI agent, was duty-bound to arrest them and haul them in uh, for you know, espionage. But if you remember the scene, it was extraordinary. They convinced him not to do that. Do you remember how that went? Actually, I hadn't gotten to, to episode five, the fifth of the of the series. I, I've so no, I haven't. Um, right, well, let me let me um, tell you at least part of it as I remember. And they're in the garage. He says, "Get on the floor. I don't want to put handcuffs on you." And they don't get on the floor. And now this is you know it. Footnote is this is really well written. It, it oh, rings it's through. Written. It's really well written. The, the words, the psychology, and and well well directed, well acted. And uh, Philip says to him, uh, "We were just doing our job. You have your job. We have our job, and uh, that's what we were doing." And, and all of a sudden, you see Stan Beeman, the FBI agent. He he softens. And, and, and they go through this conversation where every step of the way, um, Philip has some remark that begins to soften or further softens Stan Beeman. It was really good writing. And for example, he says, you know, we were best friends. And Stan Beeman has to say, I didn't have any other friends. And um, they, they both, um, you know, uh, agreed that, that neither of them had any other friends. Dan Beeman was divorced. Uh, and, and of course, um, the woman that he was dating was also KGB. Okay. I don't know if you noticed that. The, the, the woman, the blonde woman that had come on to Stan Beeman was living in his house with him was another KGB agent living with Living with the uh, the FBI guy. Anyway, they yeah, and, uh, and in earlier episodes, Philip and 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 is, is having beers with with them, you know. Right. And when he's when he's initially having mar mar marital problems, he doesn't go home. He actually joins joins Philip for for a beer um, as an all as an alternative. So um, uh, you know, it, the Philip character is 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 I think in a lot of ways the mo most co complex and. And the most the most interesting of all of them. Yeah, um, I, I agree. but but the writing, yeah, you're right. The writing th throughout the whole series is uh, high grade. So there's one other thing that happens that is uh, memorable forever and ever. So now they've been uh, that Stan Stan Beeman has let them go. He's let them escape, and and they go to their plan B. That is, let's get to Russia here where we we arguably would be safe and appreciated for all our efforts over, you know, 
what, 25 years of, of being spies in the Beltway. And uh, so the first thing is they, they drive, uh, they get on a train. Now they're on a train. The train is approaching the Canadian border. The three of them are sitting in separate seats in separate parts of the train. They all have uh, phony passports. Um, and they convince the Border Patrol, which I didn't know this, but the Border Patrol gets on the train before the train crosses the border to inspect everyone, our American Border Patrol. And uh, uh, Philip and Elizabeth uh, succeed in getting by the inspection. So they're good. They're going to be able to cross the border into Canada. And the train picks up speed. You know, it's, it's stopped for that and then it picks up speed. And they look out the window of the train, and there's their daughter on the platform. I said, oh my God, what happened? They, they, she didn't get by the inspection. The Border Patrol arrested her. No, there's no Border Patrol around with her. She's just standing on the platform as the train is leaving the station. And, you know, apparently she decided that she could make it. She was smart enough and old enough to get along at the age of whatever it was, 17 or 18 years old and make a life for herself in the United States. She didn't want to go to Russia. This is a really interesting moment. Yeah. So they go, they go to Canada. They get a plane out of Canada to Europe. They rent a car in Europe. I mean, you and, you and anybody else could do this. They rent a Absolutely. car in Europe, and they simply drive east. And they drive east all the way to the Russian border. And at the border, they are let into Russia. They are met with another character who reappears to help them um, get to Moscow. And now they're driving. It's a long way from the border to Moscow. And they arrive at the top of a hill overlooking the city of Moscow. This is their big return. Okay? And uh, one of them turns to the other and says, uh, gee, you know, we've been thinking about the necessity of doing this for a long time. Um, I wonder how it's going to go for us. And the other one, I guess it was him who said, well, we'll have to see because we're really not sure what this place is like anymore. And, that, and that's where the movie, the series ends because they could easily be, have it be in for a bad time. And it definitely was a different Russia by that point in reality too. Yeah. And they had no level of confidence that the Russia they left the Russia that controlled them all those years uh, would would be the same Russia anymore, and um, and they neither of them at that point was sure they really wanted to be there, but there they were, and that was the next part of their life. You really had to sympathize with them at that moment. Yeah. No, there was just a whole series, I think, of episodes and throughout the of the the series that are very re realistic in terms of human reactions to, to what, what's going on. Um, and with the, the spy element being superimposed over it, uh, it just makes for a fascinating story storyline. Um, but, you know, I think anybody that does see it does, does need to realize there throughout this whole series though, I mean, the, the violence really is there from the start to the finish. You know, I, I can't think of another series that held me this way. Um, and the reviews I've seen um, are consistent with that. I looked at the reviews of that um, uh, retrospective that I mentioned to you, which was well over an hour of just, you know, a critical review of this series. And I could not get to the end of the comments on that. It just went on and on and on. <laughs> a lot of people have yeah. a lot of comments about it. So you and I are not alone, Stephen, in our appreciation of, of the, the complexity and the magnetism of this whole affair. Because it makes you think about, you know, spycraft. It makes you think about the Beltway. It makes you think about the United States government, the FBI. Um, it makes you think about Russia and the, the changes that have happened in both governments since the 1980s. Um, it's, it makes it's, you think about the fact that if you're a spy, 
doesn't matter if you're Russia or American, there's some of the same tactics that are going to be used. Yes. Um, I mean, both, both sides were, were, were doing things that uh, not exactly would, would pass an ethical test. No. And, and all of a sudden you have a, maybe your perception of, of, of the American side of it and the Russian side of it have changed. And you realize we live in a world both then and now where this kind of thing happens. And I've talked to people after I watched this, and, and people have reminded me there have been news articles um, about, about Russian phony families that are spies, that are KGB, yeah. uh, or whatever the successor to KGB is these days, um, living in this country. And from time to time, they are found out and prosecuted, or they run. Uh, so the game hasn't changed. And I, and I guess well, you know we had that last year here in Hawaii that that couple that was arrested, and I haven't heard anything uh, after the initial round. But you know, were, were these really Russians or were they were they Americans? I mean, the the whole identity issue was front and center. Um, and as far as I know, I mean, they you know there's they're still a trial pending on, in that federal case. Mm-hmm. But but there's certainly been silence in the media. Yeah, well, maybe for a reason. You know? Yeah. Uh, although you don't like to see the media cover anything up, that may be a, a national a national security issue around it. Yeah, so what, what comes to me is that whoever wrote this up, and I don't have the name of the people who wrote it uh, or produced it or directed it, but they had to do a lot of research because it, oh, yes. it rings true to the history. It rings true to so many things we now know are true about, you know, the, the Cold War, the ongoing Cold War. <laughs> right. Right. No, it, it, credit for that. Yeah. So on a scale of 10, Steve, what, where, would you, where would you put this? I mean, I, I, let me add that uh, in, the, in the retrospective I mentioned, a really long review, uh, there, there were also points of criticism. Um, uh, and and some of the comments were critical, although some of the other comments criticized the people who criticized the program because they felt that you know that uh, it was great from the beginning to the end. But how did you feel about it? What what would you give it on a scale of one to ten? Probably an eight. Eight. Mm. I mean, even it was though it, even though it kept you up late. Yeah, no, it kept me going, but. Um... You know, I mean, there's there's a lot of little, little stuff that that you really wonder. I mean, uh, you know, in terms of the reality, uh, how could a couple really keep pulling the, these jobs off uh, for for that long a period of time? Um, you know, as far as we know, those those real R- Russian couples that were left that were here, um, most of them n- never did anything. They simply were, were were there in case they were needed. Uh, the few that, that did do something, um, I mean, there weren't very many incidents as far as, at least as in terms of what's reported. So, um, I mean, it, it it does have that 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 Hollywood flavor to it um, in terms of reality. But it's yeah. uh, um, but the basic theme. It's it's. I, I, it's certainly worth worth people watching it. Oh yeah, so much uh, to learn from. Um, there was also one other character I wanted to mention, uh, Frank. I want to say Lang- Langretta. Uh, he's an old character actor. We've seen him many times in many movies, and he played the role of one of the controllers, and he he was terrific. I mean, I, I thought all the acting was good. Oh, the acting was was. It was first grade all the way, all the way through. Yeah. Was he, you're, you're talking about the actor who who, who was Elizabeth's um, almost uh, quasi father. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He was. A smooth, yeah, I was really surprised that they actually killed him off because it was yeah, that that was a fascinating character. Yeah. Well, I would I would give it a ten, Steve. I don't mean to diminish your eight. Uh, I would give it a 10 because I learned from it. 
And because it provoked my thinking, it changed my way of looking at things. Uh, and and uh, the other test is, uh, did I stay up late? And yes, I did. I couldn't put it down. Uh, I, f I felt that this was really a, a tremendous job in terms of, um, you know, the, the, the factual orientation, uh, the writing, the acting, the directing, and the detail. The detail about recreating the 80s. Uh, the way well, they did a very good job. Very good job. Yeah. I'm afraid we won't see too many more like this. Uh, although, uh, to me, there's always, um, you know, it's always interesting to have a series that lives in another time, a series that mm, you know, teaches you things you didn't know about that other time. Not, not unlike, um, you know, the, the Fablemans, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> well, that depends on the acting, too. And, and, I mean, there, there. Last night there was a new ABC series called Will Trent, um, and the opening episode was um, in, very interesting in terms of the characters and where they go with it. Um, but it, it definitely has has some real potential. You know, yeah. um, to, you know, to 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 watch uh, watch further. Yeah. yeah, this was very enjoyable. It was very enjoyable to talk to you about it. I'm so glad you looked at it. And I look forward to our, our next uh, movie review on Gutman's Garage. And we'll have to decide, um, you know, an appropriate movie to look at. Absolutely. I think we'll manage. <laughs> we'll manage because we'll yeah. watch the movies anyway. <laughs> right. Right. Thank you, Steve. Steve Gutman. Thank you very much, Jay. Gutman's Garage. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs>